Well, I thought we'd kick off by doing a little experiment with you, Brady. Uh, I've got some weights here, and I want to see how sensitive your hands are at... <laughs> Do I mean sensitive your hands are? Uh, I want you to lift some weights. Uh, this is a workout session. And I want to see if you can tell the difference between how heavy different things are. So I think I'm going to take the camera. You're taking yeah. over, all right. Okay. It's fine, Freddie, you're fine, you're fine. It's not the most flattering angle, though. Which one of those is heavier? That one. Correct, correct answer. Right, so that one is... Can I look? Yeah, 120 grams. Okay. And in your other hand, you have 100 grams. Okay. Okay, now, I'm going to make it slightly harder. You could tell the difference between 120 and 100. So you can sense... 20 gram difference then. Is, is what you're shooting vaguely usable? I hope so. Okay. Okay, and uh, now, have a go now. I feel like that's heavier. Incorrect. So that is 200 grams and 220, and you can't tell the difference. And okay. there is a reason for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what was going on there is something that Ernest Weber discovered in 1834 when he did exactly this experiment. He noticed that even though you can sense a small change uh, in between two weights when the initial weight is very small, as that initial weight gets bigger, you can no longer detect that change. The just noticeable difference that you need changes depending on the size of the weights. Now, this led him to come up with an equation uh, which is known as Weber's law. That small difference, that tiny change in the intensity, if you like, of the, of the feeling, um, depends, it's a ratio really that you're, you're sensing. And that ratio is constant. So although you can detect a 20 gram difference, when you've got 100 grams in your hand, you can't detect it when you're at 200 grams. You need a much bigger difference, that smallest, just noticeable difference before you can detect it. And the thing is, is that although in weights, you're not often in that situation where you're testing different weights, actually, I think that this Weber's law applies to a lot of different situations. So, you know, if you're in a really dark room and someone maybe uh, turns on their iPhone torch and you can see it kind of like lights up the entire room. But when you're in a really bright room, if someone flicked on their torch, it wouldn't make, you, you wouldn't notice the difference. And this explains why, as you get older, years seem as though they're, they're going faster. Time kind of speeds up as you get older, right? Even though a year is the same length always, the ratio of how long that year is to how long your life has been ends up getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So how it feels changes over time. So this here is Weber's law, but what it means is that the way that we experience things in, in life actually follows a logarithm. So if you think about how something feels, your response to something, and then you compare that to the sort of intensity of whatever it is you're feeling. So this could be light, it could be sound, it could be weights. The way that this changes, it takes sort of this shape here, this kind of logarithmic shape. So what that means is if you start off down here and you're at a very low weight, okay, and then you take a really tiny change in the weight, so this 20 gram change. So this is gonna be I, this will be I plus delta I. The difference, how that feels, is gonna be quite big. But then if you're over here, so now this one will be sort of 100 grams down here. And let's say when you're over here, you're up at 200 grams. Oh, I've made my Y axis too small. <laughs> That's right. Even if you take the same change in weight, so I plus delta I, let's make this I1 and I0. That same change in stimulus is gonna feel like almost nothing in your response. So essentially what this means is the way that we feel stuff, the way that we perceive stuff in life, 
doesn't follow a linear relationship. It actually follows a logarithmic relationship, which is what this curve um, here is. And I think that's quite interesting because when you come across logarithms first in school, which I think they're, you know, when you're sort of 16 or 17, they feel really counterintuitive. They feel like they don't really make much sense. But actually, it's exactly how you perceive the world. The exact parameters on this curve change depending on what you're talking about. So there'll be one curve for light, there'll be another curve for sound, sort of how quickly it goes up and how quickly it bends over. But the basic mathematical structure of this which has been shown time and time again in all sorts of different experiments is that we perceive things logarithmically if there is a, a, an amount a, a, a change in stimulus that you can just about notice and we know exactly because of this equation where that is depending on, on what you're talking about um, people who do uh, marketing use this completely to their advantage so I swear that uh, Cadbury's Dairy Milk, over time, has gradually got smaller and smaller and smaller. And no doubt, it probably has. But the people who dis make these decisions know this equation, know the way that we perceive things lo is logarithmic, and know the exact amount that they can shrink their chocolate bar by before you notice that that's what they've done. Don't they have to put the, the mass, the weight on the wrapping? Yeah, but no one checks those things, <laughs> do they? Or, so also, they're really expensive items. They know that they can creep up the price by a much bigger sum uh, before you'll notice that the price has changed. Whereas things like things that are really cheap, you know, buying sort of pints of milk or eggs or whatever, you've got to be a lot more careful. You can only eke it up by a couple of pennies before people start to notice. Well, so the reason why I came across this was because I was um, doing some research into uh, how judges make sentences, uh, how they decide on sentences. And actually, this stuff becomes really important. It's not just sort of people trying to make a little bit more money or noticing different size weights. Three months in jail is three months in jail. It doesn't matter whether you have been in jail for, you know, three months already or if you've been in jail for 30 years already. Three months in jail costs the same amount of money to the taxpayer. You're still depriving someone of their freedom the same amount. But the thing is, is that a six month jail term feels a lot longer than a three month jail term but a 20 year and three month jail term doesn't really feel like that much more than 20 year jail term. And so as a result, there's this study which looks at the, the sentences that people give out, uh, that judges around the world give out, and there are these huge gaps in the timelines that, that, that are available to them. And it's because of this, it's because uh, it, doesn't, it just doesn't feel like enough of a difference to give someone uh, a sentence that's not one of these kind of preferred numbers. So you get lots and lots of fine granular sentences down low and then you just get nice big round numbers like 20 years and 30 years. Because people think logarithmically. Thank you for watching. Now in the past you've probably heard me talk about Brilliant, the site full of puzzles and quizzes and lessons all about mathematics and science. The people who make it are guided by eight principles of learning. You can read all about them. Cultivating curiosity is one I relate to. For example, here's a problem from Brilliant. If the Earth suddenly stopped spinning, mayhem would ensue. I think that is perhaps a slight understatement, but let's continue. What would happen to objects on the surface? Now quite aside from answering this question, what I like is clicking here to discuss solutions all sorts of people are explaining how they worked it out, and others are commenting on it. It's not just about the answer. I really like seeing how it's explained. It's cultivating my curiosity. Now, if you'd like to check out Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash number file so they know you came from here. There's loads of free stuff on the site, but the URL below will give you 20% off a premium membership with access to even more stuff. Our thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode, and we'll see you again soon.